That's a hard ass. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, for, I mean, for, especially for a, like yet another robbing, competitive shooter. Veiny yeah. ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. And then that's Jordan, that's Pedro, and that's you watching us live, helping us form. You know him, you love him. Cocaine Voltron. So, gentlemen, we've been dicking around for about two hours in the pre show. We have. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, been, it's been a minute. We, we, we had a long, fruitful conversation about the presence of aliens on Earth. We, we tapped and the brakes um, when we got um, to mama, furry mama? truckers. Yeah, furry space furry truckers, truckers space like truckers, cyber truckers, <laughs> furry cyber truckers is where we're like, okay, we need to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> then Pedro had a like, we had a throw out about escape velocity. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's escape velocity, the Kardashev scale. We go places, and apparently, one of those places is not talking about Linux games. Well, you know, there was that exciting moment where Pedro found a pen, like. He, he was so, he, I found he, my Parker pen. That it, was nice. It was very chest pumpy. He was like, oh. I, 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 I confounded people with my pencil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know where it is now. I love this pen. I do. Very, Go very back much. and watch the video version <laughs> if you want to get an idea of what's going on there. So, what's up? I had to ask, uh, what was the name of the game? Because uh, I think Strider tried it too. Um, Forspoken? Forspoken. Mm-hmm. Forsprocken. Left Forspoken. I was curious because your box, the rectangle that we built, uh, I'm like, hey, it's got a 5600G and it's got a recent and I can play around with it. You know, it's not mm. like dialed in like the DOM. I'm like, yeah, let's try it. Let's see if that works with the um, 5600G. It laughed at me. Um, <laughs> it just straight up opened a little dialog box and it's like, this game requires a minimum of 16 gigs of RAM to play. Go away. Like, huh. All right. <laughs> Eat a dick. Um, cause I tried playing it on my 3060 and man, that, that is one fugly game to run that poorly, even at 1080p. So yeah, there's that. Maybe it runs on a Steam Deck and we get a chance to try it around. Uh, a couple of bits of, uh, housekeeping, the pod guide for Reaper, Reaper installation under Linux, along with video number two, which will be editing and producing with all the tools you need to play at home. You can play the game at home along with the video for making your first podcast with three people on it. Learn how to use a DAW baby steps point in the right direction that's all going to be released monday for patrons and uh, i'll be back tomorrow i should be 10 a.m that's like my go time if you want to stop in and listen to some sweet smooth jazz with old man vin as i'm editing this very episode on youtube so yeah stops how about you either i'm Jordan? cleaning a lot i am i for for whatever Where? reason um, I cleaned my gym. Uh, I need to clean this room cause I'm getting a bunch of new furniture. So I hear I'm, you're getting a new desk. I am getting a new desk. I have with a friend a file who's cabinet co- with, yeah, with some <laughs> filing cabinets. I'm going to be a responsible adult. I can store my paperwork and not just cram it in a corner off screen, off camera that you can't see over there. Uh, that may or may not have some scroll droppings on it. I'm, um, I'm, uh, I was going to say is like, and there's stuff off the <laughs> stuff <laughs> out of the shot. You're embarrassed by Yeah. Yeah, you just, yeah, you just can't see it. The, 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 the rest, the rest of it's fine. Listen, I I have very low standards, but some some stuff falls below that. It, impossible as it sounds. Impossible as it sounds. Some stuff is a little too embarrassing, even for me. Oh, is that it? Yeah, sure. Why not, Pedro? Fine. Talk talk about your favorite pen. I want to I, I want to hear a three hour speech about how Parker pens really get your prostate massaged. Uh, not really. It was just uh, ever since school, I always had a Parker pen, and I really like how smoothly they write. So I, uh, I'm I, telling I, you, Pedro, lost... we need to sit down and workshop calligraphy, hero. We can make this what? thing work. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I, I gotta ask now. What, what, what is your least favorite pen then? Uh, those felt tip ones. Just Felicers? because when like sharpies, um, sharpies like actual sharpie branded. Those are uh-huh. fine. Those sm- are you talking about those little bullshit smoothly? little thin ones that you're like, yes, yeah, those are terrible. You just writing with them makes like the hairs on my arm stand up. It's mm. like, mm, I, I do maybe, not maybe, like. maybe, maybe you should stop writing on your arm. No, I wasn't writing on my arm. See, the only cure for that is more edible icing. 
that glows more in the dark. More edible glow in the dark icing. <laughs> glow in the dark Again, icing. Yes. You're, you guys you guys are really missing out by not by not tuning into the pre pre super show. Uh, I mean between that and our potential upcoming jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> I throw that brick in your face. Now what are you gonna do with it? Mm. Do you think we'd ever? I can't remember the exact text on the on the listing, but it, yeah, yeah, balaclava and, and, and jewelry, some, <laughs> some, something, something anti-terrorism, massive sparkles. Like maybe we'll get on the horse one day. Horse jewelry. Uh, we didn't look up horse jewelry. That's a damn no, we, we we didn't. But you know, what? you probably can bejewel a horse, especially one as decomposed as ours. It's the steam. And uh, Chris Pratt. There's a name I hadn't heard in a while. Uh, I not, knew not, that not he Star was Lord. Not Star, not Star Lord. Lord. <laughs> uh, I knew that uh, once he left uh, Video Gamer he, UK, he went to work for Eurogamer. But after that, I don't know what he was doing. Uh, but apparently, he's got his own YouTube channel with a couple of other people, uh, and they have people created, make games. People make games. They have created a video talking about the less good things that are happening um at valve uh they spoke with uh, 16 current and former employees uh to ask about how it works how it um things proceed inside if the flat structure thing is actually um legitimate as valve wants it to be perceived and uh, in the video one of the big topics is uh that it's mostly you know straight white men uh there's a lack of diversity at valve and he points that out and people in the comments on youtube took a bit of an issue to that and started calling him a racist which well, you know irony it's, just it's, it's interesting because like he goes in he goes into their whole selection process and mm-hmm. the sort of the sort of economic pros and cons of it because there's this whole stack raking mechanism that exists within valve to determine what your pay increase or decrease for that year is and part of that is like um how how involved are you with your non core functions uh because like any anyone in the engineering team can basically do anything uh but they do they do want to incentivize people to do some of the more hr functions uh so but the pro- the problem is that if you hire someone who doesn't work out then they don't know if that reflects poorly on your your scoring or not so what you have is a bunch of interviewers coming in taking very low risk candidates because you, uh you don't want to you don't want to be the person who takes who takes the blame for this bad hire, since hiring is such an important thing at Valve. And so you basically, you hire what what already exists there, which at the time is a lot of industry be- veterans, a lot of the industry veterans uh, that have been working in the games field for a while are straight white dudes, because that was what the, the market was dominated by for a while. So yeah, you, ha- you have a bit of this selection issue, uh, which ca- which can spiral into some other risk-averse behavior that the, the, the documentary goes into. Well, they went into that. I think this was very important to and they even touched on this in the little documentary was um, Valve doesn't hire junior positions. Yeah. yeah. Like at all, like they hire senior, like you've been around for a while and that's the pool that they're picking from. So it's what's worked up through that system. So that, you know, it puts them in like a weird ass place too. You know, you got to pick what is available if you're hiring. Do you think Valve should hire some more junior positions? I, I, I think that will definitely help or at least like create a ladder. Or like, cause, cause again, like uh, the, the documentary goes into this, they don't have any like sort of college outreach. They don't have any mm-hmm. mentorship. They don't have like an, any sort of on-ramp. You basically, and you're, they don't you're have way- anyone. Yeah. They don't have anyone that they can actually say, no, you are a new person. So you're going to work on the stuff that most of the higher ups don't think that they're, uh, low enough for. So like fixing the, the- bugs or handling the more menial stuff. The other interesting thing, too, is that the management structure is flat only really if you're in technology, if you're in legal, yeah. if you're in payroll, if you're in any of the other non-technical roles. Mm-hmm. Your mobility is fairly limited as well. Uh, and at the end of the day, they, they talk about how, um, like, oh, there aren't any bosses at Valve, but that's patently not true. Uh, leaders, leaders rise up and are, um, are they, they, either, they either rise to the top due to them being the de facto experts or because they have taken charge of a project, but these people still exist. And a lot of these people who do this are the people with seniority because they've, um, they've run the most number of successful projects going through this. All I could really think of is this is a really, really interesting case study on like lawful neutral versus chaotic neutral, because Mm -hmm. you take a regular corporate structure that is very hierarchical. 
that is that is very lawful um and you have sort of the polar opposite of, of valve where everything is more or less self-directed there are leaders that arise but it's a lot more of a chaotic system but you still get the end result right like you still have the people at the top making demands that are still that still trickle down mm-hmm. there there's a little bit more back and forth and there's a little bit more play in that but at the same but at the end of the day you still get you still end up with these same hierarchies just via a different vector lord of the crowbars man lord of the crowbars um <laughs> it's weird how it should, I mean, Valve is a very unique thing to study. And I think uh, a lot of it's got to do is like, we don't have a lot of information on really what goes in because, you know, people come in, they do their time and they leave. One thing you can't say about Valve is like, a lot of turnover, not yes. like massively, but I think, you know, especially in the flat structure, people don't want to fuck around with it. Cause you know, a lot of people want to come in, they want to make games that are going to be in that, you know, they want to get a project done. They want to get something stuck together. And you know, one thing, uh, the good stories, bad stories you've heard from Valve, one thing that is a constant throughout all this is getting anything done at Valve requires a small, and that's not right, a massive damn miracle yeah. in order to get the momentum, get it through, and get everybody on the right page. And I've only talked to like two different people that I've known over the years that worked at Valve. One was infrastructure, server side. So they didn't deal with any of this shit. They were just like, whatever, I just get hired, man. Make. Imagine a flat structure in infrastructure, though. <laughs> imagine having like a proper flat structure all the way through including hr uh, management uh, actual <laughs> everything is well, I, flat you so, want to do hr so just out Pedro, of the blue, go I, I, we're gonna have another meeting about the jello wrestling pit um <laughs> Listen, <laughs> no, I, sorry, I'm, I'm not doing HR anymore. If I had someone else, I'm going to will my Listen, desk. <laughs> we need a Jello wrestling pit. In fact, we need two because it's too damn popular. Everyone's in the saying, pit. Man. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but the other person I said, and I talked about this years and years and years ago, on the, uh, and you know, not something that you're not going to find elsewhere, that it's literally like high school or secondary school. Like you got to be on... <laughs> To, you got to juggle the social dynamics on top of trying to get something done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, you have to and, harass people. If you want to make a game, you have to find people who want to make a game. Otherwise and, you're not even, even some of the issues that got brought up here, like the, a couple of the people interviews were, were talking about how they were trying to like create some initiatives within valve to like fix some of the diversity problems. And that a lot of that fell on deaf ears because, um, be- because it they, was they, safer uh, to say it's yeah. like I'm not sure that's a good idea rather than yeah. putting their yeah. backing behind it and then it backfiring for one reason or another and that's a negative review for their stack um yeah there, there, there's thing. a lot of like <laughs> in individually motivated decisions it, again it, it, it's it, like Ven said it's it's a fascinating case study um but yeah like it it, it just goes to show you that you know no, nothing nothing is perfect there's always <laughs> There's always going to be issues, um, and the important thing is to have like leadership that is responsive. So hopefully, hopefully something good comes out of this documentary. Hopefully, like this trickles up, and I don't, I don't know if this is going to change Gabe's mind, but it might at least like put the idea in his head, and maybe some more incremental changes will happen, uh-huh. or maybe they'll just be they'll just double down because that's what people do. So I mean, yeah, the pro could be like, this is just how we roll, because it works. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're still a private company; we don't owe anyone yeah. anything, uh, and yeah. It's, it's our shop Don't like and it. you know for positive That's like it. you can always like push on like hey man it'd be cool if this and like stuff that you would like to see in there but i mean that does boil down to like you probably find a better place to work too um because when i think about working at valve oh it, it it's that flat structure and the thought of trying to get something done without having any authority to get it done has always interested me but it's also I mean, repelled that's me. that that's a day in the, uh, working for the NHS. But <laughs> yeah, Pedro, I'm a huge fan of getting shit done by any means necessary. Though. <laughs> <laughs> what, what 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 about putting a bucket on your head? Well, I was going to finish this before I went to the next story. But if you're <laughs> okay. in that big of a rush, we can go ahead and hop on. I mean, if I mean, if you got something to say, go ahead. I was trying. Go. Cool. Well, I guess. <laughs> Like, I'd like to be able to try that out maybe for a year or something like that. But see, that's what I'm getting curious about at Val, right? And like, hey, could you come in and effect change? Because, Pedro, I know you remember when um, Sterling and uh, Total Biscuit mm-hmm. went to Val. Val was like, hey, can we talk about some things and change some things? Like, what are your opinions? Like, maybe we could, you know, move the green light and stuff like that. And you hear a year later, and Sterling came in and was like, they didn't do any fucking thing, which 
you know, I'm sure the people that invited them to Valve to listen were there to hear their thoughts, but they couldn't affect any change, is what the, I'm getting at. And uh, <laughs> again, going back to the, the video, they're talking about how like a, a strategy a lot of people were taking at within Valve is going for really high-risk projects at the beginning of the year and then transitioning back to the stable, stable stuff near the end. So just to, just so that uh, you have recency bias and your review doesn't look as bad. So a lot of like the long-term strategic stuff just gets abandoned because it's not as sexy. Yep. Yeah, but then you got to think about it. how do things like Steam Deck get made? So someone must have really had an someone senior must have really been pushing blackmail. That's kind of it. Blackmail. When you Jordan. have Kidnapping. Gabe and Plagben and uh, Lawrence Yang and a few other like senior people going, yeah, we're gonna get this done. Lots and lots of kidnapping. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you could just threaten people with firing them. That's that's kind of it. We're gonna kidnap your children's college fund. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you can hold your children's grocery bill hostage. That's how I, it I can imagine that uh, Gabe being, you know, a big fan of the projects. Probably a way to go. Yeah, no, that thing's gonna get made. You say that, but we all know Gabe's just at the drag strip playing with those hot. No, he, he he he's on his <laughs> mega yacht, man. Playing his yeah, we saw it. And he would needs a portable something very efficient gaming machine that he can take yeah. out in the ocean. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Uh, now Jordan, I would like to talk about somebody with a bucket on his head. Have you ever worn a bucket on your head? I have. Why? Many times. For what reason? What, 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 was, uh, it, what was the end goal? Uh, to give myself a concussion when I bong. <laughs> I've What's done it? the put a metal bucket on your head and then speak to hear the resonance. Did did you did you ever like put the metal bucket on your head and try to joust with your heads and like No. That's a different type of special. <laughs> um maybe you put a bucket on your head because you were in a vi- village far away and you needed a crazy platformer with a touch of ooh, look at that. Put on some clothes bucket. Them head. cheeks. Mm. Woo! <laughs> that ass. <laughs> Looks like he's turning into a clawed giraffe. Um, yeah, a world crowded with funny creatures, bizarre weapons. Join Rufus, um, the anti-hero with a broom and a bucket, on his absurd journey. I'm always wary when things are a little too self-referential, like right out of the gate. And they're like, ah, this is a joke game. But I think it looks all right. Um, I'm okay with games not taking themselves terribly seriously. In no, fact, that th- th- tends th- th- to work in their favor more often than if not. If we want to dig around there, there, the tags, There's a fine line for that. Yeah, Metroidvania, <laughs> funny 2D platformer, comedy. Like, okay, it's, this has got... Posit- positive reviews uh, for the most part. Big honking lack of gameplay. There are some gameplay. Hmm. It, it, I mean, it's, it's a 2D it's a, it's a uh, platformer. Grab your broom. Yeah, it's <laughs> Metroidvania, yep. <laughs> I, what, I want, what I want to see is like, Buckethead, you know, the, the, the guitarist, I want him, I want to see him do like a long play of this. Hmm. Bu- bu- buckets yeah, well, on buckets. We, <laughs> we had actually talked about Clucky Hero before, uh, it, when it first came out in early access or the, sh- the store page showed up. I don't remember which of the two it was, but, uh, it's proper out now. So yeah, you have that, bucket abilities nice. like double jump and dive and armpit <laughs> yeah. shot. Wait, pe- was that a pelvic shot? That was an armpit shot. Okay, armpit. Right it reminds me a little bit of uh, Boogerman for the Genesis. Y'all, y'all remember that? So I think the first thing people are going to see is like, it's 14 internet. Yeah. Just go be real with you. Uh, so maybe, maybe, I don't know. Look at him run though. Um, hmm. yeah, 91% uh, positive review. So maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, precisely. Okay. Hang on. We need to check this week's uh, Hollow Knight. There's potential here, but it needs more to achieve it. The graphics and the writing. What is this on the Hollow Knight index now? Uh, we we got to check the Hollow Knight stock market. Fourteen ninety nine. It's okay. Hollow Knight priced. This okay. is one Hollow Knight. <laughs> hmm. Okay. I don't know. I mean, Maybe. could could be worth your time. Could be. Could be. Would be I nice don't know. to have like a demo or something. Then you could like try it out and see if you like it. Or like if, if are they waiting the, for the, the next fest? I mean, that's coming. So maybe. <laughs> But it's, it's, the, uh, especially with uh, with humor games, right? Like you got you got to like have a little bit of a lit in this test. To see, like, am I gonna even like? Is does this even click with me? Yes. Or well, no? what was the thing this week? Like city building fest or some shit like that? Like it was something dumb, man. It was like urban planning management simulator fest. Hey, people love them city I skylines. Missed that, I- <laughs> dude. Yeah, the d- d- box turned b- 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 blue, and I clicked it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, really? 
Huh. Oh, base builder fest. There, there we, we go. <laughs> it's orange, not blue. <laughs> No, the notification box in the Steam Collapse. Oh. Yeah, like, yeah do I have that disabled? <laughs> okay. I don't ignore the rules, man, or the truth. <laughs> Just like, give me the truth database. Rules. The truth rules, man. Uh, Agent in Depth. Is it yeah. out of it? No, it's not. Well, it's, an er- it's still in early access, but uh, it's described as a daring action platformer with fast-paced combat. Basically, because you have one hit point, so if you get touched, you die instantly. Um, there's apparently no upgrades here either. It is entirely skill-based. So this is either going to gel with you or you're going to fucking hate it because you're, you're <laughs> either one of those Dark Souls Levin's masochists or you're someone who likes you playing straight up plays a character named Randy. Randy? <laughs> but, like Trailer Park Boys Randy like, or like Randy Marsh? Random Randy, Randy the yeah. roguelite protagonist. <laughs> All right. What do we think? Agent in depth? I mean, I mean, it looks kind. Of, it kind of is it like, oh, what would you say? The neon pixel aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the programmer art. When we had the, that interview with the, uh, I can't remember the name of the game. It's three yeah, bucks. Speaking. I'm just gonna buy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah like, I mean, I mean, like, on, if we're, if we're bringing up like the Hollow Knight index, yeah, this right. is probably you know, you know, very low opportunity cost. If you if you don't end up liking it, you can refund it. But like, yeah. If, if you're into like your meat boys or your uh, shinobis or anything yeah. like that, it might be for you. Yeah, I'm looking at that. I'm like, I can get three dollars out of this. Like, yeah. What do we need to run it? What do we need to run it? Uh, sixty no four LTS, uh, 1080p, forty ninety. Okay, hmm. eighty eight hundred GTS. Water cooled forty ninety. Gonna yeah. pick one up. All right, got it. Um, <laughs> wow, an eighty eight hundred GTS. That that's proper. <laughs> Dust it off, man. What about multimedia? This is one of those uh, categories of. It was kind of like uh, what's his name with the spider legs last week. We don't. Oh, uh, uh, J- J- Jeremy legs. or Joshua's. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This one is uh, hand drawn, and it has. It, it's doing the whole. We have more than one aesthetic type of situation going, and each of the different art styles, and uh, they're drawn with different mediums. Some of them's just uh, you know. Um, graphite others are like crayons others are like coloring pens pedro it's come here looks <laughs> very uh it looks very very nice and uh, as look- they start showing the gameplay you can see like all the different places and all the different like type of get, biomes that you're exploring I get big uh terry gilliam vibes from this if you're like a fan of the old monty python animation yes. definitely yeah <laughs> it just uh, looks like a regular sex dungeon <laughs> it it does what it's doing, it's doing it very well, and I don't hate it. What I'm kind of disappointed with is another 2D platformer. Yeah. Really? Huh? Could we have this, but That's in like, like know, a first person or a third person type of exploration y type game? Does it oh, have man. to be another 2D Let platformer? Me <laughs> I I I want I want like a first person shooter done in like the take on me music video style. Dun, 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 yeah, dun, dun, like fully head drawn. Yep. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah that, that, that would be dope as fuck oh but, man yeah and, uh, i mean it, it looks good and it's reasonably priced so yeah that's... dude all of this for like half a hollow night like less than half yeah. a hollow night less than <laughs> thank you for uh, there was one that came close uh paper sorcerer back in the day but that game had severe issues bugs specifically so mm. yeah no i like the idea behind multimedia a lot just uh no more platformers yeah, again <laughs> oh i don't mind platformers you can be as long as they're good platformers this is i will play a tsunami of your bullshit and, and just to get that one hollow night uh out of it but the next game you can't really complain if you don't like it you know what they'll give you a full refund they will straight from my htc desire <laughs> to straight to steam yeah free droid uh it is a uh it is a text or not text based it is a pixely RPG, um, uh, you can install it from your local Yum repo. You could install it via the Play Store. I think this is actually one of the uh, the first games I straight up installed on my Android phone. Uh, but yeah, it's it's ba- it's basically Diablo. He plays uh, a typical with, with, Linux user, yeah. just yeah, you, assaulting things. It's more Fallout <laughs> tactics than Diablo, but yeah, oh. go on. <laughs> yeah. All right. I I, I, I mean, the, the, the point and clicky vibe kind of gives me some uh, some Diablo vibes, but I guess if it's more turn-based-y. Anyways, um, yeah, it's, it's a free open source game. 
I don't know. I look at I look at these coming out on Steam, and I really wish Steam would introduce like a pay what you want option so that these guys can make their hundred bucks back. Cause like it's it's nice that again, we're we're all about open source games on Steam. Makes it real easy mm-hmm. to grab the latest version. Uh very good way to like get back or f- submit feedback to the developers because you know, hey, it's all in one place. And, and you if get you're cloud the saves. Developer, yeah. And if you're the developer, include like a little bottom after the free uh, option, like a DLC that's like support the dev. That's yeah. it. Just, just, just a little something, because like the, the free drive <laughs> guys will give you money. <laughs> like these guys have been putting, putting out this game for I don't even fucking know how long. Um, and it, like, it's just like omnipresent. Like, yeah. that's just existed. I remember the, playing um, this on my netbook on Linux because, hey, look, it's a game that's available in the repo. I'm just going to download it and, it and play it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, I'm, I'm glad to see this on Steam. I'm glad to see stuff like Wesnoth on Steam more, but mm-hmm. like, yeah, have some kind of way to support these devs. Just just kick them a buck or two. Okay, right? like, so uh, well, uh, I'm already on the wiki page, so hands up. Uh, when was this? When, when did this start? I'm going to say 2004. Uh, 2000, let's see, I started using Linux 2005, probably around there, yeah, 2004, 2005. See, I'm, the best we can do is I'm getting a not 15 one publication date at 2012. Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a lot more recent. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's because I, I assume that this current year is 2013 and 2012. Was oh, two years right. been three. Okay. Uh-huh. okay. All right. right. You see, there's a difference. <laughs> Freewood classic. Classic. Ah, right. ah, okay. All right. Let's see, look at this. Right. Just, Mi- mystery solved. My apologies to everyone at home. We accidentally learned something. LGC oh, no. cares. Sorry. All right. Well, let, let, let's 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 go erase that and play with some toys, dude. Um, yeah. yes, little big planet, but with guns, and not little big planet at all because I've never played that game. I'm just assuming it operates like this. Hyper charge unbox. We played this. Uh, we threw some chairs at it last year. Safe to bet. Amazingly well done game. Very performant. Mm-hmm. Ran very well on the Steam Deck, and it's Unreal Engine four. Really nice. Really smooth. He plays little tiny little soldiers, and you slaughter each other. It's dope as hell. They got an update. Major oh, update number blur. 11, man. Goku? That's, a, yeah, right? Uh, Kame House? Uh, yeah. 100% what that <laughs> it's is. It's Yamcha. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, it's that slide off brand Goku like all the other toys that they have in the game. But yeah, very much. Oh, <laughs> so down with this. Um, you know, I thought this game, they were just kind of done with it, but apparently they're not. Uh, yeah. They're still doing some stuff. We get a new big boss blimp. Um, shocks, shock soldiers. And um, a new map, Adventure Tunes. And I kind of went back and I'm like looking like, how often? It seems about every two months they do an update for this game. And they've just been plugging along slow and steady, keeping their heads down. I downloaded it. I played around with it this afternoon. Lo and behold. Gentlemen, oh, it's I mean, not Skeletor. <laughs> there were seven people playing the game on a Saturday, which was seven more than I thought. Because how many times yeah. is it? You know, when you would expect like the most popular time for people to be playing games, like on a Saturday afternoon, we'll see zero for games. But look at all these fixes and improvements and all that. So we're going to play a it. That's chunk in the, of um, an update. Yeah. yeah. We'll be they're, playing they're, in the after shows. All right. And it is unfortunate that it doesn't get anywhere near as many players as it should. I, too, checked Steam charts and I there think... were like 30 people on and they actually saw a bit of an increase over okay. the past couple of months. It's like 127% well, average concurrent. What doesn't before, really do anything new? Before no. before we went live, we were talking about the price of it too. Like it's yeah. 20 bucks. It's not it's not yeah. cheap. That's a hard ask. Yeah. <laughs> like, for, I mean, for, especially for rigid, a, like yet another competitive shooter. Veiny yeah. ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> coming up next. Reference? Yes, indeed. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're nothing but penis references here. Coming up next. Intel comes up short, but I'm shh. Don't you worry. We'll get to uh, Intel's uh, compensatory move in, in, in a moment. Uh, and thank you, Seebs, for the 100 bits. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you'd like to be uh, like uh, these particular Gentlemen, I think folk. I've discovered why people whore themselves out. It works. <laughs> Validation. Oh, Fuck. my God. Ah, bits. You're so cute. All of you. Mm. You know, you know, if, if, if you want to if you want to help us with our uh, validation starved personalities. Validation. 
Va- yeah, validation. validation. Star- no, fal- validation. Validation. Fa- fa- it's validation. 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 <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen, please, please validate our fallacies by heading on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Give us a, sign up. Give us a message that says that we have hot dicks because uh, we really need the compliment because our, our, uh, maybe our, we our got tricky dicks, Richard. super low, super Combo. low. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> so, sign up, get access to our discord channel where we are the other six days of the week. We can, you can RSVP to game streams. I do borderlands on Thursday. Ven does track mania on Tuesdays and Ooh, Fridays. Track mania note. Ooh, track mania note. So we do track mania. we got a private track mania server that, uh, we got a nice core group of people and we do 14 new maps each and every week. You know, we're doing classics. We're like somewhere in like 2013 right now going through some of those maps. We practice on them from Tuesday until Friday. Whenever you get a chance, server's up 24, seven Friday. We put our points, points match nine ninety nine. It's just an excuse to hang out. Do what we do in the pre-show. We talk about movies and stuff like that while we're racing and trying to get good. Just having a good time. I want to bring this up I because I didn't get it in the show last uh, Wednesday. Jill also comes and plays with us as well. We have a, like a core group of about eight or nine people that are just always going to be there. The group size maximum I've set uh, completely arbitrary has been 12 since it got way too big. Then it kind of died back down. Now it's getting big. Trackmania 2020 is coming to Steam at the beginning of next month. So there is your artificial scarcity booga booga right there because those three spots are going to be gone. So you might want to get in while you can. There you go. I've set my piece. Jordan, All I've right. set my piece. I've done my shucking you, and jiving you, and you, selling. You've done it. All right. Well, if you if you want to play Borderlands with myself and Patrick seems to show up a lot. Sometimes Joe is there. Sometimes Rohit's there. Uh, sometimes Strider's there. But we okay. usually have a couple slots open, so you can probably pop in. You just need to be friends with one of us on Steam. You can get in. Um, we got two. We got a. We got a store who. Someone made a purchase off of store. There's that penguin. Com. Jeez, he was hiding. Oh, yeah. It's just solid, sneaky penguin. <laughs> the shilling penguin. Hiding all his cash <laughs> under his mattress. I'm going to try to transform the penguin. So if things crash, blame the penguin. Don't. All right. <laughs> Don't more than trans- meets the eye. Yeah, we got a store. Store.com. Buy some shirts. Buy some stickers. Buy some coffee cups. We got a bunch of stuff. Uh, we got to thank Sandy, Sandy Martin, for mm-hmm. buying a shirt. Uh, oh. which which he desperately needs because that guy just needs to fucking put a shirt on. Um, and if you have a, if you have a friend who needs to put a shirt on, keeping a shirt on, yeah. if you have a friend who is constantly <laughs> naked, send them over to our store. We can we can get you covered. Uh, we got wish zones as well. Uh, if you head over to Linux, oh, right. Hang on, goddamn uh, marketing. Oops. There we go. Uh, uh, yeah, store. Uh, store. Da, 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 stickers. Hoodies. Uh, hang on. Let's see. I gotta figure. It. Who's this? Let me see if I can the, figure the, it out. Uh, all right. Uh, is this Jordan's? Uh, it it, it yep. is. Yes. It is. Uh, yeah. Uh, head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Put your mouse over the support button. I have a wish zone. Ven has one. Pedro has one. Jill has one. You can buy. Uh, ice I need cube. Ice Cube, goddammit, and an Epic. But more importantly, I need the uh, Super Micro Epic motherboard to play Track Mania. There. Um, <laughs> And Pedro, Pedro wants to be involved in a traffic accident, so help him. Pedro us. wants yes, a $500 audio interface. <laughs> yeah, that's been there for a long time, and I'm glad no one's bought it because I'd feel real guilty if anyone did. <laughs> well, uh, you, know, so, so you, yeah. you, you need to give Pedro an incoming file transfer. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. There's uh, that two terabyte SSD there if you'd like me to help. Like me to help? No. If yes. you'd like to help me... <laughs> Uh, download all of my games Pedro from Gog needs to and save itch. floor plans and all the places he plans on robbing with that file set that's on his wish list. So don't think about it too hard because that's exactly <laughs> what this is, man. In modern time and age, it's all 3D, man. It's, that's how it's mapped out. We do thank you for your support. And yep. each and every one of you who have continued to support us over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, and we got a couple Donna. of people. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah. We got to think this week because they were making it rain bits all over our face, chest, and neck. I mean, we were just having to wipe it off. We were running out of tissues. We had to get towels. 100 bits here, 100 bits there. You name it. Done him. And, and a 27 course, month three sub. So, yes. 27 months. And, uh, hey, it's kind of yeah. neat. Kinda by by the way, if you want in our Discord, you can also get into there by subbing to us on Twitch. So yes, you can. If you oh, have that Amazon is, Prime, is... use that Prime subscription. It gets you Discord access. Bezos yep. bucks. No money on oh, your end. Yeah, you yeah, might <laughs> spend your parents' money. They don't know. Uh, they're not using it for anything. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you know, the, what, what, what is the average age of like our listeners' parents? Like 70? Probably. like uh, You know what? We, yeah, <laughs> considering the average age of our listeners, 30 yeah. to 40. <laughs> Surprisingly lower than that. Um, 27. Okay. Oh, so, okay. so, so, all right. So 50, 50s and 60s, maybe depending 27, on 27 uh, to like 36 is like the, like, that's the lion's right. share. And, uh, 
Like it, and it doesn't even like register until you get up to like 24. There's no teenagers listening to this. That's what I'm getting at. Uh, if, you know, and if you are also a teenager listening to us, for kids. send us some fucking hate mail. I want, I want to, I want to know if we're, if we're hip with the youths. There, there's gotta be some kids out there. that are like, fuck yeah. I listen to this shit, man. Um, I'm tired because you know, you, I remember being a kid. I was like, I'm tired of all this kid bullshit. I can't deal with it. I need some people that are like, well, yeah, I need sophisticated, mature content like Linux Gamecast. <laughs> but I'm to also be fair, drinking. when I was a kid, I really liked like the, uh, uh the hot wheels or other, uh, die cars lego i I really like that stuff and i kind of never grew out of it so So, i mean so did steve like it's the same deal oh here's something very depressing for you know the the ones who make it extraordinarily depressing i (laughs) wanted to get a uh because north ranger just posted the how do you do fellow kids you know steve Mm -hmm. ushimi with the uh music (laughs) band and the red shirt they sell those as costumes now nice like that's bullshit i want I wanted to get like the sicko shirt from the onion, you know, the guy peering into the window from, from the meme. <laughs> Those are expensive though. If you want to buy them from the onion. Thank you again for your support. We'll be around. Um, come say hi. And yeah, as uh, Jordan pointed out, if you have a Twitch sub, if you're a patron, link it to our discord. Oh, can we say something about discords real quick? Sure. Why not? They're not paying us. Um, if you No, they're not, not even a little bit. Uh, the, if you have a GitHub repo, don't fucking lock, like, all content, you know, there's no replies, no messaging, no talking, unless you're a previous contributor, but also be like, yo, if you want to leave a bug report or anything like that, come slide into my fucking Discord. Fuck you and fuck your Discord. Discord is not a bug tracker. That's no. What, that's literally what the bug tracker on this GitHub is. I was, I wrote, uh, okay, case in point, you know, I, I, I was talking about this on, you know, on the Twitters, right? Mm-hmm. As somebody does, because I ran in to a situation where I was like, all right, hmm. Uh, yeah, no, please use dis- Discord instead of reporting bugs and a uh, uh, stable release. All threads about pre release will be closed and locked as per the first paragraph of a release note. And, you know, of course, uh, you might know Joshi, right? From uh, <laughs> yep. DXVK. And, you know, yep. like, and he's like, what the fuck's this about? I'm like, stream effects, because you know what? I have no idea. How do I provide a GDB backtrace in Discord? I don't know how to go about it. Also, I'm not joining your Discord to do that. I was trying to help and leave, like, by the way. an interaction pin for non-contributors. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean... That's a Strider level I was about to, to say that. Uh, it probably would make Strider blush, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh, that, 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 that's a hair to Strider, even for Strider, so... <laughs> the, um... Yeah, the, the, there's an entire mechanism built into GitHub for the uh, conversations that you can enable. Yeah. So people don't have to go off fucking platform like Discord or some shit like that. And like, I, yeah. I don't care if it's Discord now. It used to be IRC. I would get just as equally go fuck yourself because you That's know great, what? It's a great yeah. way to get your lace you lost, right? Like Exactly. You, you think about the people in the future when I'm on that trail and I'm searching down and I'm like going through the post going through it was like, and yeah, go to IRC. Like, well, that's lost. Yeah, yeah, no. Where's the log? Where can I search the logs online? No, you got to go into no, IRC. You, you, it. Good luck you, with you, that. You, you got to hope someone in the room who sees your message remembers when the last person posted about mm-hmm. this, so that they have a copy. Yeah. It's, so it's, all it's I'm not, saying yeah. is, person whose repo we're talking about, Strider from Lutris, is even going, damn. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like when I did it, it wasn't permanent. <laughs> yeah, it's like I just got out of my system, man. <laughs> that, 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 that was to buy a little breathing room. Mm-hmm. Not, yeah. Our, our, to deal right. with users. Now let's talk about dealing with ARC GPUs because um, everyone's excited. I, you know, here, okay. I was super excited. I didn't, I, I, I squeed a little bit when I saw the headline, like, ooh, unannounced ARC GPU. I'm like, oh shit, they're going to release something that's I kind of want to buy. Then, then I fucking went to the website. Um, according to the CompuBench website, there's a new desktop Arc GPU, but it's not an A5. I don't fucking want an A580, motherfucker. That's uh, not the problem. Not the never been brought into contention because what I want is an Arc 780. Because apparently this, by the benchmark, is about 42% slower than the A770, which is a wee bit slower than an NVIDIA 3060. Not yeah. TI, just regular 3060, which. Mm-hmm. It's just slightly not. faster than the A380, supposedly. 
<laughs> yeah, the, uh, so so the the article got wind of like uh, th- this new this new GPU, the ACM G12, and they thought, oh, maybe this is the and the uh, the author thought, oh, you know, maybe this is the the mobile model, but it's not because there is another mobile model that got published, and this has like better specs than that. So what? This is Intel's mid range, but their mid range competes with the, or, but their high end competes with the existing mid range. So who is who is this for? I don't know. Uh, what, what about I this? Gunner is releasing a MXM. Who remembers MXM? Uh, Clevo is still releasing laptops with MXM slots. So. Right in this non-existent future that we've all tried it, we've all kind of wanted at some point. I'm like, hey, can we upgrade the GPUs? I'm like, no, it'll it takes up too much space. I'm like, shut up, Apple. Uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, Clevo, and there was another brand. I'm sure Mir will pipe in in a second. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's there's still a couple of laptops being made that have. MXM slot. Dude, wouldn't it be so cool to find somebody with like a, you know, a 3080, uh, the portable version and swap it out with a Intel thing? Yeah. Yeah, not Dell. <laughs> just, just, cr- you could just probably cr- lie cr- to them and say that it's better. Cr- <laughs> right. Cr- cram it into their PC. What I'm port. saying is, yeah, you can use this for just thievery all day long at yeah. work. I mean, <laughs> but, but can it run Vendetta, Curse of the Raven's Cry, if you Ooh. plug it into a PCIe? No, no, slot. no, no. See, you, you have good equipment. You're just using it wrong. <laughs> Um, I want, I want a 780 or I want a 770 TI version. And I want them, you know, apparently Intel is still plugging along with the drivers though. They're still making, you know, generational jumps and performance, you know, which is. They finally fixed DX9. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By, by using DXVK turns out. <laughs> yep. DXVK native. And there you go. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know, somebody finally kicked in that fucking door and we're like, we don't have time for this NIMBY bullshit. <laughs> yeah like n- yeah not 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 invented here like right. guys, mm-hmm. guys this thing exists and it's already pretty well tested just uh-huh. use it the community has done a very good job of it and it's being used on the steam deck and valve just empir- powering an entire platform on their own effectively using the xvk fucking use it <laughs> i then again i i wouldn't uh, like I, I, I like peaked i'm like well it's a 770 because you know what i i'm at the point now where i'll, I'll give you like 200 bucks for 770 but that's it's it still, still still 500 canadian which is like reasonable considering oh it's completely like, reasonable if it outperformed my 3060 but it yeah. don't no nah, may, maybe one day the outperforms it handily <laughs> it's yeah <laughs> right so, um, yeah, I'm not going to pay more for less. I mean, I'm not the brightest one, but, you know, 16 gigs of air. I'm like, yeah, that's neat, but it's much slower. Well, at this in, point, in, in, NVIDIA will do you 12, lost. though. So how about 8? You, you want 8? Yeah. I can do you 8. Well, okay, this is the whole thing. 11. Uh, there were some more <laughs> news rumor bits about the 4060 Ti, mm-hmm. and apparently it's going to be 8. <laughs> teardrop well, <laughs> i guess the crypto is no longer that big a market oh, so they can't no, justify 12 no, gigs listen and, and, and nvidia you've <laughs> already pissed everyone off so i want the regular 4060 to be 12 again i no no they, they gotta oh, release no. the 4030 with like 16 gigs of VRAM. no no, just, no 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 okay because here's the thing like the 3060 came out and fucked with everything because it was 12 which ended up more than like the 3080s mm-hmm. shit like that here you go nvidia release that bitch with like 24 gigs the 30, it, 30, 30, 60, 24 no, no, gig? the 40, 60. Ah. 40, 40, 40, 60 make it, make it yeah, equally yeah, as <laughs> ludicrous as the 30, 60, 12 gig was. Like, what? Why? 12 gigs? I'm like, what? I mean, yes. Give me, give me, give yeah. me, give me. I need that. Not for gaming, but um, yeah. Do something like that. And like I said, everybody's already pissed off at you. <laughs> like, you know what? I'll give you 500 bucks if you're going to put 24 gigajoules of uh, memory RAM on it. Everyone's pissed off at NVIDIA, everyone's disappointed with AMD, and people just straight up lost their patience for Intel and uh, how long they've taken for, to do all of this. So you got nothing to lose, Intel. Get on with it. Don't whine about it, man. I mean, you, you can 8.0 about it. Hey, why an 8.0 is out? And it comes with some pretty neat stuff. Uh, the big one here is that PE conversion is done. So now everything within Wine can be built as a Windows portable executable. This is going to be great for uh, dealing with anti-cheat. Because now everything is not a mix of like Windows and Linux uh, binaries talking back and forth. It is it can all be done via the Windows EXE format. However, not every module has fully been converted to use the PE interface. So you're still gonna there's still gonna be some uh, EXE to uh, Linux binary conversations that are or communication that's happening. 
they are working to cinch that off within the 8.0 life cycle. So that's pretty cool. Um, controller hot plugging is a thing. Uh, better, better, um, DirectX, uh, 10 and 11. Excuse me, Jordan. I wrote controller hot plugging exclamation point. <laughs> I, I mean, would you, would you care to go? It's into a thing depth? you can do now. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I can plug in my controller and it works. Uh, they're, they're still working on the windows media foundation stuff. It's slow moving. It's again, it's, it's one of these whole reverse engineering things, probably very patent encumbered. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of fluff in this release, but let's get back to the controller hot plug support. Um, <laughs> with the detection and greatly improved uh, removal insertion, giggity, uh, correctly dispatch applications. Something about driving wheels? Why? Yeah, yeah. They're they're Actually, using uh, SDL having, to yeah detect the wheels for, for wheels that have configurable. Let's say you have a wheel that has a max like 900 degree turn one side, but they have a configurable. You can set it to only rotate. 400 or 360 degrees in one direction mm -hmm. one one neat thing that too wasn't with working in mine now it could very well be if someone decides to implement it properly one other interesting thing they stashed at the end of the release notes is vkd3d is apparently now just like shipped within the wine source tree it's not a it's yeah, not an external vkd3d uh, has been a wine native project for a while it that's why the vkd3d proton fork exists mm -hmm. But the also another big one is the WoW 64 improvements with, you know, the looming death, uh, death of 32 bit on desktop Linux and everyone wanting to get off of 32 bit multilib. Being able to have Wine itself handle 32 bit games with their own implementation of WoW 64, it basically lifts that requirement from the distro having to support it to just Bye. Wine having to support it. <laughs> I miss you. Goodbye, friend. <laughs> it died? What no, it, 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 it was not long for this world, but it... Let's go, my jump. It, It's planet needs it. Yeah, um, I'll ask you this about wine. How long, is, how long do we have until the like, serious work and effort is going to have to be done to get wine working on Windows for backwards compatibility? I think that's already happening right now. There's already a wine on Sigwin project. Wine on WSL. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, people, I don't know. Uh, yeah, people are already, um, using VKD3D and DXVK to get games, uh, that would otherwise require DX12 in order to work on Windows 7, which only supports DX11. So, yeah, there, there, there's I, also yeah, so think... some, there's also some stuff with like people on Polaris GPUs now, like if they need, if they have games that are using, uh, DirectX 12, VKD3D mm -hmm. is kind of the only way you can like straight up play this game. Uh, the, there's a bunch of issues with the uh, first spoken, uh, not working with uh, Polaris because of the lack of, with, uh, oh, you mean people trying to play the game with the Polaris? Yeah. 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 Probably the, the, the latest RX triple eighties, five nineties, four eighties. No, no man. Yeah. Can't use your <laughs> yeah. retro GPU, baby. Uh, <laughs> the, the single most popular line of AMD GPUs in many, many years, you know, them. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, yeah. They're, they're, they're still kicking around cause they're, they're not bad video cards, but and they on hit Linux, the, they're really good video cards. They, they hit the I'm point that my old Zubin did. Where like now now there's just like feature disparity and now just shit doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it's like you, it's like, you know what? He's got to pick and choose. I mean, I understand they they're still a uh, you can get them like super cheap too. Yeah, like two hundred bucks yeah. for mm -hmm. like and yeah. the RX five eighty. If you get the eight gig version, that's not high end by any means, mm -hmm. but it's still a competitive GPU. It's the the biggest for, thing for ten eighty p. Yeah, for uh, yeah. the competitor <laughs> against that is like fifty six hundred G. You need, a, you need a new motherboard for that, though. So. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, you know what, you, you might not, considering the BIOS updates. Maybe. You're going from a B350 yeah, from yeah, six yeah, years you ago. You might, you, might, you might need sure. to fully disassemble your computer, though. That's, that's what happened to me. <laughs> but if you're on an old Intel platform, then, uh, yeah, the RX 580, 570, the, as long as you get the 8 gig versions, still very performant. Pedro... Tell us about League of Legends possibly going open source. Well, Nothing it, it already has. Unwittingly, oh. but it already has. Yeah, League of Legends source code uh, is being ransomed by the uh, malicious actors who socially engineered Riot. One of the Riot employees got social engineered. And uh, yeah, they got access to the source code for League of Legends and team fight tactics, which I'd never heard about before, and some legacy anti-cheat platform, whatever that was, 
Um, These all gentlemen of that, are straight to the point, Pedro Matias. We do not wish to harm your reputation <laughs> or cause public disturbance. Our sole motivation is financial gain. The yep. ransom notes. <laughs> I mean, you out. can't blame, oh, uh, you know. <laughs> t- team, team Fight Tactics is their League of Legends auto chess. That's what that is. Mm. Right, okay. But yeah, no, the um, the malicious actors very much went up to them and said, you pay us, what was it, $12 million? And we will not uh, release... Ten, uh, $10 million. $10 million? Yeah. Right. Uh, and we will not release any of this, and we will dispose of our copies. And they said, yeah, we're not gonna pay so i fully expect that to be open source in the coming days <laughs> i mean is it is, is this gonna help with league's famous toxicity problem probably not. well there's going to be a lot more bots now that people don't just have to guess at the api they can look at it <laughs> well couldn't they deal with like 90 uh, percent of their uh, bots problems by i don't know making it a 99 cent game Someone claimed that once. I can't remember who it was. <laughs> but uh, no, they have, they're just going to introduce kernel level anti cheat to League of Legends, uh, make it like Valorant. Yay! That's so another he's going to need to support a, a, an entirely new that. branch of uh, GE Proton just to support that shit now. Because we had, we he had the he had the old League of Legends specific branch. Yeah. Well, I really like how they went out of their way to say we don't negotiate with terror. Fucking call him right now, uh, <laughs> and that will never fucking happen. Yeah, tell them we'll give them twelve. Um. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they, they're gonna fucking pay the money. They already. Like, oh yeah they're, yeah, they're riot. They're fucking rolling in it. Yeah. It's just like, right, they can't cheap. afford it. I mean, they're hundred percent owned by Tencent, so I guess Big Daddy China. Is Here's the it. thing I was gonna bring up, Pedro. <laughs> yeah, to that. I, knowing how much money they have and also who their backers are, I might be just a little more than normally worried about uh, getting identified and disappeared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is not outside the realm of possibility when dealing with uh, these particular companies. Mm-hmm. Like if you told me like somebody was going to come after like Valve, I'd have a hard time believing, but like NVIDIA, when we're talking about <laughs> NVIDIA source code, <laughs> Gabe comes after you himself, like Liam Neeson style. Like Gabe, Gabe's going to show up at your house with a fucking six pack of like uh, imported fucking beer, man. He's like, all right, let's sit down and talk about some shit. I'm like, all right, Gabe, fine. Let's talk about it. Uh, Jensen, like when NVIDIA shit got leaked, I'm like, NVIDIA disappear, motherfucker. There's like not a doubt in my mind. Like there's a, that's two calls away. You, you know, you, 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 th- you think uh, tech Jesus has like an active bounty on his head from NVIDIA. <laughs> no, t- that, no, this is how you stay public. You got to be public, yeah, man. No, right, ah, that's right. the thing. Steve can speak Chinese, so he w- they'll probably give him a pass. It's it's the rest of us. <laughs> Mate, we'll we'll see. Tune okay. in next week. We've been bought out by Listen, Tencent, you guys. Uh, here's the whole thing, man. Listen, if Steve from Gamers Nexus uh, uh, accidentally rides his uh, mountain bike down an elevator shaft onto some bullets. <laughs> and- Next time he goes to visit uh, Kingpin at EVJ, it just gets disappeared. <laughs> no, no, there, there's like the, the the next video posted, and just like a completely different like Asian dude is like, "Hi, I'm Steve from Gamers Nexus," <laughs> with a like massive wig. Yeah, it just oh. like a fake ass wig. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, so hi, Steve. I know you're the type of person that will probably watch this. We're just goofing around so just say, save us the twitter post okay? send, send, send us some hate mail we yeah. love gamers nexus <laughs> make no mistake out. um dxvk well uh specifically hdr support for the xvk yeah this is the oh, xvk no, 2.1 it comes uh with proper uh hdr 10 support for the games that support it and of course if you have a monitor that supports it uh, there's a couple of flags that you need to enable. You can either set it on the um, config file with the XGI enable HDR, or you can pass it as uh, DXVK underscore HDR equals one as an environment variable. It Yeah, that's pretty simple. So if you have an oh, HDR come, monitor... Why do we even need to bother? Everything breaks Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Rockstar's own updates break Red Dead yeah, Redemption it's, it's too. Like, it's <laughs> like, we just assume. Put a note in if it doesn't break something in Red Dead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at, at the at the moment though, if you want to take advantage of HDR via uh, via 
DXVK, you're going to need to be running it in game scope as no current desktop environments really support it all that well. And D3D11 support is a little wonky, especially with DXGI. Apparently, there are some more fundamental issues with how HDR is implemented within DX11, in some DX11 games uh, using uh, DXGI that um, makes it no go for this type of solution right here. Hmm. Yeah. The, the big one that might affect people who manage their own wine prefixes individually, uh, the setup uh, shell script file is gone. So if you want to deploy the XVK manually, you're have, you'll have to use Lutris or wine tricks. Proton already handles that uh, automatically. But yeah, there's the setup script is gone now. So I want to be very clear with this. I was like, you know what? I had a couple hours, uh, like two or three hours to fuck around the other day. I'm like, hey, you know what? I, I have a monitor that does HDR. Let's fuck around with this. And I looked at the uh, pre-flight checklist with the all the shit I needed to get, do before I could flip that switch. You're on NVIDIA. Gamescope ain't going to work so good. <laughs> it works fine. Yeah. It's 2023, finally... Pedro. Wake up. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, yeah it, it, works, it, it works fine now. I, you just, you okay. just need to have uh, mode setting. Jeez, man, he gets a fucking AMD card, man. You gotta walk over there and knock that dick out of his mouth. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> to be fair, Our team, team red. for the longest time. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, it, 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 was completely, it was completely borked, but these, these days it's fine. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I just looked at that checklist. I was like, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't care enough. But, I mean... <sighs> It's just HDR in general. I'm like, I'm glad it's there for the people that want it and they need it I, in their lives. Good for them. I still can't see what the fuck is going on when HDR yeah, is it, enabled. It's a lot like ray tracing <laughs> with a lot of good shit, but I'm like, yeah, if I don't. Yeah, okay. Yeah, all right, I see. Uh, only fine. instead of being the reflections, uh, you're looking at a completely dark screen and you can mm. make things out. And I, I'm not saying not, not, going, not, not really. My like, eyesight is not that great. Bitch, how are you not Hobbit? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? That's a good question. Let me get back to you. Wait, How you can't an, see the Night King's army? <laughs> is that a Magic 6, 7, or 8 game engine? Uh, it is all of the above. Uh, open, it's not open Enron, it's open Enron. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no fraud here. <laughs> New tactical uh, RPG from Linux yeah, Gamecast. Indeed. Uh, I have to check back in the show notes because we've talked about open sauce, might, and magic before, but that was for numero tres. This is for 7, 8, 9, though. Uh, 9 is currently the only one that works they're looking to add support to uh, support the other Might and Magic games. As time goes on, you can see some screenshots here. It looks like Might and Magic. Mm-hmm. Um, and very, it's it's a pretty recent project. Uh, I think the la- oldest stuff is from like a couple months ago. So it's still in pretty active development. Um, but yeah, love love to see uh, open source engine reimagine. He looks yeah. shifty. That that elf lady <laughs> looks like she's on some kind of drugs. I mean, uh, Elf Lady's baked uh, and her liver is failing because her eyes are yellow. <laughs> Listen, that's, that's just the color, color of Elf eyes. Haven't you looked deep into Legolas's eyes? John, just tell me what you see. Where are the hobbits going? Uh, they're taking the hobbits to dialysis. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, what I want is someone to re-implement the source engine, uh, because then we can have my, uh, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic also on an open source engine re-implementation, uh, and we can have all of the Might and Magic games on open source engines. That, yeah, please. <laughs> Pedro, if we would, like, dialed it back, like, six years, and, you know, me and you, we, we pop in our little, um time tube and we go back and they're like so uh how's the open skyrim game <laughs> people from 2023 because that's obviously out by now isn't it well it technically can open the bsas for <laughs> oblivion fallout 3 fallout new vegas skyrim and maybe fallout 4 i haven't heard anything about that do you but- think do you think maybe they don't want to <laughs> fuck with it because big daddy bethes is still Printing it's still an active big, years big, later. Big, very big active daddy microsoft you mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, they could totally do it for oblivion and i'm i i want that to happen because that would also mean fallout 3 and new vegas would be not far behind o- open mw uh for at least for uh morrowind is more or less complete right like there's maybe a couple yeah. things that are missing, no it like, is like feature wise now that they have proper shadows and distant terrain it is com- complete it, it, they is still at, want it is to at add the level more of things, like original Norland. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They just want to add more things now. <laughs> okay. Like Skyrim support and multiplayer. 
All right. Well, maybe maybe you could <laughs> do mean, it through the uh, multiplayer mod. That let's talk yeah. about Gary let's and do, hacking Do it through Stadia. Stuff, right? Yeah. Right? But- <laughs> Looking into the Stadia controller Bluetooth mode web zone, because yeah, Google's like, here's a website to unlock your thing. By the way, you better get it done in you know, a couple of months because we're going to take the website 31st. down and get yeah. fucked. Um, <laughs> and this switches it over to whatever the hell it was, you know, moon magic to uh, just standard blue teeth of until December 31st, 2023, you can change it over. So, you know, Gary does what Gary does, man. He analyzes all the things with the Bluetooth and the websites and looks at the bootloaders and he keeps going. How deep? Pretty deep. You know, dumps the old firmware. Look at that, X editor. And um, yeah, it's just as good because people are going to tear these fucking things apart. Yeah, the, uh, th- this particular project is um, the current update removes the Wi-Fi functionality and switches it to Bluetooth. But what if you want to switch it back to Wi-Fi? And this is, this is him figuring out a way to do that uh, with, the, with the hopes that maybe one day uh, the Wi-Fi enabled Stadia controllers can be repurposed for other things and not have to work just over Bluetooth. Or Stadia 2, because Google figured they tried it the first time. Stadia 2 Electric Boogaloo. Mm. Use your old controllers if you still have them, if you didn't switch them over to Bluetooth. <laughs> oh, you know. Dot com. <laughs> dot, 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 dot ru. There's something to be said Click about on you know, experimentation. <laughs> and actually, since Google have now put the expiration date on the, uh, on the website. Mm-hmm. Fair. Okay, then I get the point. What if people who happen to have a controller don't see it before the end of 2023, and then in the future they go, "Oh, I kind of would like to be able to use this." I, what What are they doing? Because they're not they're not busy playing their Stadia games. <laughs> Maybe they're I don't know busy playing on their PS5 or the Stadia. Dude, I'll tell you what they're busy doing. They're busy trying to fucking scalp their Stadia controllers all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. that, those are better prices than the ones in the UK. Dude, all, all right. right, hang on. We, we got to sort by um, 44 bucks. Show only. Yeah. Sold items. Sold items. <laughs> sold items. Sold items. Sold. Where am I not seeing it? Uh, the second, second one from completed the bottom. items. Or completed. Yeah, that, that shows the ones that ended without anyone oh, buying. 52, 52 Canadian bucks. dollars, 44. Okay, 24 40 is fine. So that's fine. <laughs> nope. Nope. 94. <laughs> yeah, no, the, uh, the the ones in black text didn't sell. The ones in green text are 36. Sold. 36 yeah. is pushing it, man. <laughs> how, okay. how did it get to 70 bucks anyways? That's what I wanted. Uh, FOMO. Four for 150. <laughs> you know, if... Uh, if <laughs> Four for one fifty. That's it's not a bad deal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Like uh, these, I'm sure, like Pedro did. I slowly cruised into eBay. And I'm like, yeah, I'm picking one up for ten bucks. Unlike Pedro, I <laughs> cruised into eBay thinking, yeah, people are just throwing these things out. Maybe some people will have the hindsight. Ah, uh-uh. people are people are trying to turn that Stadia controller. <laughs> Into one of these. Remember when these were going for 170 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> so my advice to everybody right now, don't pay more than 20 quid or 30 bucks for one. Wait that shit out. Then pick one up. Why would you want to? I mean, you'd have to be pretty dumb to buy one right now on eBay. How dumb, Ben? <laughs> I may or may not have one. On order. <laughs> How dumb, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it was. I'm not uh, pointing fingers, man. Come on, <laughs> just cameras, was, just cameras. Twenty three pounds. Uh, so it was twenty pounds. Uh, with three pounds for shipping. So. <laughs> All right. Um, well, uh, hang on. Yep. Yeah, I got a little bit extra in there at the end. See. Uh oh. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, what, the reason I want to get one is uh, Ben Hack took one apart from uh what was that element 14 he, they used to do was it L- 16 or some element show El- element 14 i think was the one yeah something like that Sounds and um it. yeah ben Hack, uh <laughs> he took one apart and he the entire time he was like this thing is so fucking over engineered like everything in it is like so overbuilt it's crazy then there's a brilliant thing in his video go watch it where he goes you could probably run over the run over this controller with a car that it immediately cuts to his drive what with them driving over <laughs> Like clunk clunk, and he's like, "And we're back." Uh, yeah, everything works. <laughs> Let's plug it in, see if it still works. Yeah. Ah, so so, okay. so Google the made triggers it with, were broken. 
uh, one of the triggers just wasn't registering yeah. at all, but the rest of the buttons were all still working. Fine. So, yeah, so, so, go- so Google <laughs> yeah, made them with stick. like old school Nintendium. They got the last global supply of it. After, <laughs> they, they thought Nintendo <laughs> used it all up to make the original Game Boy. They but- probably were able to sell these, uh, engineer these and sell these at a loss, thinking they're going to make it up naturally with yep. subscription. You know, there's, For sure. yeah, there was probably like, like solid 50, $60 worth of actual hardware sitting in these controllers. So. Yeah. Okay. In my defense, the one that I'm that I have on order is supposedly uh-huh. brand new, never opened. Oh, so we'll you're never going to open it. <laughs> it, it it's gonna it's going to be it. like his PlayStation. Why would you never do that? I, 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 have, I have a second Steam controller new in box, man. Never <laughs> just because there. I don't buy shit to, to not use. I buy shit because I want to play. I with bought it. it as a backup. <laughs> so okay, <laughs> all I have to do is start using my Steam controller and wear it out. Mm-hmm. Good good luck. Those things are those things are pretty rugged, actually. Uh, I They're chunky. <laughs> how good are you in controllers? Because I've never like just worn a controller out my entire life. I have I have smashed controllers to that death doesn't out count. of rage. Like rage smash. <laughs> but then again, I've never rage smashed a controller. That my brain is too uh, fiscally conservative to like. It's like go put that down. Let's go find something cheaper and beat the shit out of it. Um, <laughs> the PlayStation Two controller. I've worn out the like the um, rubbery tops of the analog sticks. Okay. It's very, very worn out. Uh, the, the eight bit do controller, the one that looks half SNES. Uh, that one just broke on stream. <laughs> I was playing, uh, the star Wars ginger souls. Uh, <laughs> the, um, the only one I've ever worn out. And I had to send back was this, uh, this Xbox one X S. And it's this right bumper, which is a known, it is one of those right bumper X, but the entirety of the front page of people like, yep, send it back. Microsoft knows about it. I am being very, very uh, careful with the dual sense because like a month after it I came out, I want to meet somebody with saying, a $200 controller because I want to, I want to see what that shit feels like. I, I, yeah, I want to dual sense edge. I, yeah. I am curious, but not $200. No, ah, curious. no I just want, like, what, what, what listen, I want to be, like? I want to be $5 milkshake adjacent. <laughs> I want to go over to somebody's fucking house and be like, hey, you, 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 right. you want to take a sip. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't want to buy the whole milkshake. You just uh, want yeah, to yeah, I just want to feel, oh, I'll spit it back out. I won't drink it for you, but yeah. All right. yeah, yeah. I, I am v- being very careful with the dual sense because yeah, a month after release, they were going, the analogs are drifting. Fuck. Ah, I just put three pounds on it. Drift. Well, moral of the story. Drift. Just bought a Steam Deck. Coming up next, oh, Tetsuo Kaneda. So Something about Trapper Keepers, where they're throwing chairs at Trapper Platformer. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. I have been informed that I don't know how to read or pronounce shit. This week, we're throwing chairs at Trapper's Platformer. Trapier's Platformer? I don't know. Uh, what is the Chairquisition? This is where we take a game that usually gets sent to us, like this one. We got to thank uh, the devs for sending it to us over Curator Connect. Uh, but we take a game, we run it on a bunch of different Linux distributions running different hardware, and then we give you a final amalgamated score. Says you Jot it down I on some graph on paper. One gig of RAM. Uh, no, that's a lie. <laughs> that is an eight gigabyte stick, sir. God damn it. Fake journalist. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, give it a score of one to four chairs. Four chairs means it's great. Four chairs or one chairs means that it's crap. Uh, this week we're taking a look at Trapers Platformer, developed by Molamucho.com, not Zombocom, done on the Godot engine, you can pick it up for about four bucks US. What is it? A story-driven, Metroidvania-ish challenging platformer with cute hand-drawn graphics and a focus on exploration. Uh, so let's get into that. How did this run on Nobara? It, uh, ran, uh, out of the box on Nobara 37, uh, with the RX 6700 XT and the 5800X 3D. No issues whatsoever on the Steam Deck with uh, Valve's custom APU also ran um, out of the box. There's no explicit controller support on Steam that it, it shows you, but it is Godot. So whatever you happen to have X input, direct input, it's probably going to work. Uh, the developer on the um, store page says that it's all hand-drawn and judging from what I played and what I was seeing on screen, I believe it. It looks like they drew everything on their leftover uh, maths notebooks from school and university. Uh, the music sounds uh, like it too was made by the dev, though apparently that's not the case. Ven will get into that. Uh, although 
the like interior dungeon uh, backing track. I didn't hate that one. That one I did not hate at all. So good job there. As for the fun, well, it may be gush to say, but it is a charming game. Um, it's the work of someone working within their own constraints, and instead of, you know, uh, hitting the, the cheat button and going to the asset store, they did a very good job. They actually worked within their own constraints and did everything that they could to make the game themselves. Limited visual design knowledge, but you can draw? Draw it all by hand. Uh, limited musical knowledge, but you know, uh, just enough to create an inoffensive beat to entire the player to move along? have that and it it works it's still not enough to for me to overcome my doneness when it comes to 2d platformers but i can safely say i don't hate it so two chairs <laughs> there it is 64 bit <laughs> ah with the r9 hey, thing on our decks oh, oh, right. where are the golem cliffs baby we, we gotta get over to jordan there we go Cliff Jordan. my golem, baby. <laughs> Spam golem. Hey, um, yeah, so on Fedora 37 64-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti. Launches out of the box. Uh, it does have an option to toggle full screen, but you gotta drag and drop your own resolution. Controls work fine with the DualShock 4, but I found using the D-pad uh, that the game was dropping some inputs. No such issue with the analog stick. So I pulled out my trusty, dusty Switch Pro controller, um, and I paired it. And a little bit weird, uh, regardless of whether or not you turn on the switch compatibility mode, it thinks that Y is jump or uh, X is jump or X is attack and A is uh, uh, jump. Yeah. What, what, one of the others jump and attack. Um, <laughs> it is usually jump. So probably the inverse. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the, 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 the point is though, that regardless of what steam input settings I had, the game did not respect it and use the top most button for attack and the, uh, leftmost button or rightmost button for uh jump anyways um music got kind of grating especially that boss theme the graphics looks like they were drawn in paper on graph paper because they were the hurt boxes i will say are a little bit weird some of some of the in-game geometry for like the non-level stuff um it's a little it's a little questionable fun wise uh yeah note to anyone who missed that uh in the tutorial you can in fact attack the spikes and you need to in order to defeat the first box um, I found one piece of gameplay footage outside of, uh, of playing this game who got stuck on that boss the same way that I did until Pedro and Ven were kind enough to explain that, yes, you can destroy the spikes, at which point the boss becomes pitifully easy. Uh, interestingly enough, if you turn on some of the difficulty settings, the easy mode actually makes that boss harder because there are less places to hide and more places for those fucking diamonds to kill you. Just a note. Um, the like project has a lot of uh, spirit put into it and it shows embracing that DIY aesthetic to a fault. Like, you know, your main character, it's a tortoise. Did, did you know that? I didn't. Uh, it is very basic though. And while a lot of effort is being put into the presentation, the actual gameplay mechanics, they're a little lacking. The fighting is pretty stiff. And once you get past the first boss and you can afford an upgrade, you can get some, you can get some power-ups that make the combat a little more tolerable, but like having some kind of dodge or some some better mobility option um would probably be a little bit better um there's also some pretty gnarly knockback that will fuck you up i don't know i felt that og castlevania had better quality fighting uh but that's just me um also the platforming it's kind of floaty there are long stretches of the game where you're doing nothing but platforming and it's not very tight and you just kind of breeze through those areas because you have a pretty substantial margin for error uh <laughs> unlike pedro here uh but yeah I don't know. It's, it's just kind of okay. Uh, like, like it's not, it's not lazy. Um, there's clearly a lot of work put into it, but I guess it just didn't really click for me. I'll give, I'll give it two cheers. Over here on the, uh, eight gig stick room. Yes. Yeah. Lo and behold, uh, no on Debian. What's soon to be Debian 12, 1920 X 3060 powered. Well, our journey starts with me sitting in a traffic light this afternoon. On the way home, when I hear a message, beep, I'm like, something is desperately wrong if we're getting a message on a fucking Saturday. It's like, who died? Who died? And Jordan's like, hey, man, what's up? How you guys doing? Um, the fuck I beat this troll? <laughs> <laughs> so It uh, happens. It happens. And uh, I think uh, Pedro and I both walked uh, through that. But all right, so let's talk about how it runs. It launches, you do get a few options, you get reduced difficulty, extra platforms, and full screen. All this plus a volume slider. Now, how much would you buy? Not much. 
reasonably reasonably priced game. No controller options, and uh, it's kind of spray and pray where the buttons end up on your uh, controller of choice. Like uh, select being jump button number two on the <laughs> Xbox controller. Ghost jumps are a thing, but I'll explain to you why that happens uh, later on in the fun section. I'm just kidding. It fucking auto jumps. If you hold down the jump button, you just keep jumping and jumping and jumping. And it's kind of like what Pedro's doing now, but with uh, less dying. Um, and I believe, I want to believe that the soundtrack, if you're familiar with Buildzoid, he plays uh, his own music in the background when he's uh, streaming. And it, it sounds like kitty cats inside of a metal garbage pill being rolled down a hill. <laughs> kind of like that. Has the same, same energy, same vibes. And yeah, you do you. Let's talk about fun though. Because Tarper's platformer is charming. It is, 100%. Uh, it's one of those games where you don't expect much and it over delivers ever so slightly. You know, I like to think of these games as prototypes that just got out of hand, man, like Vangers with less drugs and more beatnik <laughs> turtle. Because I'm pretty sure that's where you lifted the uh, character design of uh, our protagonist buddy there. Anyway, Tortuga. Silly little story about evil and ogres, which I liked. I was posting some screenshots about it last night in our Discord. You know, you jump around occasionally, you stab, you collect coins, you get your power-ups. But I keep waiting for it to go full Metal Frog Fractions. I keep waiting for that secret door to open up somewhere. And, like, it just becomes a completely different game. And it wouldn't surprise me at all. Because I, I feel that the entire time I'm playing. I was like, there's some... God damn, Pedro. Um, <laughs> like I said, about three <laughs> minutes of that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, man! That that was me with the fucking orc portal. So, hey, like, this, is, this is very accurate uh, to some parts of the game. So, uh, now you know, I almost tapped out when I first went to the treasure island after defeating the orc boss, and uh, I started climbing the tower. Then the bus saw showed up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, dude, why? Because that's precision platforming, and apparently, my idea of precision platforming is to hold down the jump button after I'm done jumping for some reason. I just kept on jumping and I kept on dying. So I, I just jumped out, went to the bottom, like, I'm just going to keep going to the right. As one does on a platformer. Then I hit the mouse room. <laughs> yeah, the fucking mouse room, <laughs> the right? The rats. <laughs> That's just a big loop. That room is just a big loop for a health increase. It's, <sighs> it's not worth devilish. it. Devilish. <laughs> No, that, that, that's uh, some fucking trolley level design, too. Because, like, nothing up to that point led you to believe that there would be a, just a room full of murder rats. It, it was just pure murder rats all the way down. And I'm like, do I care enough? Do I care enough? Nope. Give a fuck to me. My <laughs> give a fuck of me to just, like, pegged hard right there. And you know what? Hey, you know what? I like the silliness of the game, the overall charming presentation. But it's charming like getting a coffee mug from your five-year-old niece. In the sense that you can tell effort. You can tell love. I've clearly been applied to this, but fuck all if you're going to pop it in the microwave and find out, right? Uh, when it comes to the engineering on the back end. And that's kind of what I feel about this game, but help. You know what? If you fix that, let, let me disable the auto jump thing. I might go back in and play a bit more. Tighten up those hitboxes too, because those are a little too squishy. And they cancel your attack if you get hit. That, that needs fixing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm two chairs, which means, hey, man, it's a functional product. And you know what? It's priced to the point where no one's going to get stabby about the shortcomings. But yeah, some things need to be fixed. Especially. Oh, that, 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 that is some fucking notebook, dra notebook drawing right there. I've, I've drawn that exact wizard before in my notebook. <laughs> I, I appreciate so much of it. Um, right. Yeah. Like it, tr charm is charming. the operative word. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it is a charming game. That, that that's about all it has going for it, but it is a charming game. <laughs> I mean, it's like pumpkin pie, right, Jules? Sure, why not? Yeah. <laughs> Coming up next, uh, not not Div not Divex, <laughs> but we're talking about the Division Two. That's, why would that's I cheating, but no, all no. out. Hey, you know we got timestamps <laughs> on Spotify now. Oh, they're doing that too. All right, no, I did not know that. <laughs> do we have time spots on Stampify? Now you're just making shit up. You if say you that like as somebody <laughs> who clearly has not been to Stampify. <laughs> no, I, 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 guess, I guess I'm a stamp Stampify. poser. <laughs> it's, where, it's where you show off your stamp collection. <laughs> ah, there's a name for uh, people who collect stamps, but I can't remember it right now. Stampies? <laughs> St or, or do they prefer stampers? Stompers. 
no, Rom- no, romper stompers. Uh, Are they the Ivory Coalition? I can only think of phrenology, but that's not it. Uh, there's. Um... Oh yeah, those phrenologists love stickers, man. <laughs> <laughs> we have options here at Stampify: paper, <laughs> <Stampify>. colors, <laughs> diameters, <laughs> gaps, and marks. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, that just makes. Uh, Pictures stamps. into steps. All hey right, man, it's cool. the GIMP user's manual. I thought it was uh, appropriate. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> hey, uh, if you have created your own stamps using Stampify, go to <laughs> LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and uh, scroll down to the bottom of the page. If you happen to skip over to the caveat that says that if you include URLs, your thing's going to get uh, spammed, that's Spam. on you. So yeah, LGC Weekly is the show that you want to send your hate mail to, which will be addressed right here, right now. Or you can do like Mister Punk Ass Fuck, actual name, uh, who left us a comment on YouTube. You can also leave us a comment on Patreon. That's a great way to get in touch with yeah, us because we'll fucking yep, yep. see that. Well, that's an easy way to do it, but that that's like cheating, man. That's, uh, it's that, using your yeah, privilege. <laughs> That that's you pay to win, money, man. So yeah, use L- abuse that L- privilege. <laughs> LGC is one hundred percent pay to win. Wait, how many bitcoins do we need, Pedro? Twenty one point fifty five. Twenty one bitcoins, and we will immediately, within five to six days, respond to your question live on <laughs> Guaranteed. There we go, Philatelis. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> Who's reading that? I'm not. All right, right, well, this is from Mr. Punk as fuck. Division 2 in PvP is a shit show. Unsurprisingly, at least I tried a year ago. Give people the possibility to be a-holes, and it will always happen. There's always a couple builds that work really good, so if you don't run these, you're probably hosed, and players could play sound clips through their headphone mics. You could probably guess how bad that is. Volume at max, very offensive shit. And the sound is played to anyone in the area. But if you stick to the bounties, missions, raids, the PvE parts, all that toxic shit goes away. The devs have talked about an additional expansion or something because players still play it and want more, but supposedly it's a new team. I haven't kept up with the progress at all. Still looking forward to it. Okay, Mr. Punk Ass Fuck, I love your name. Uh, I'll take your word for it. I've been curious to try Division for a while. It's just that... This is Division 2, Pedro. D- D- uh, yeah, yes. Division 2, which we, which is being brought <laughs> up. We talked supported. about that last week because they added uh, Steam Deck support. Yep. I didn't want to confuse anyone in the audience. They were like, oh man, I can't wait to go play the Division. I can't wait two. to play Divex. <laughs> the my, the my, one my that is Dragon specifically Ball Steam Deck compatible. Uh, the Yeah, no, it is that kind of game. I'm curious. I am, but uh, it's Ubisoft, and Ubisoft are scum. <laughs> I mean, most AAA game development studios are scum. <laughs> yeah. so, but Ubisoft you know is pretty bad. <laughs> so feel free to not give them any money. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, come on. That's like passing on a Pokemon game. Which I did. To be fair, Ar- uh, not Arceus, the, what was it? Sapphire? Scarlet and Violet, the new ones. Yeah, that that was still they're, only they're, counts as those one. are bad. Two two, ga- two games actually. I would have bought them both because I am that big of a chump. You're gonna buy them if they fix them. Sure. <laughs> Supposedly that's coming. I'll wait until I, I mean, see we it. We definitely looked at the division, and I was wholly unfamiliar. I don't think I've ever played any Ubisoft shooters. Um, but I mean, it looked like. Uh, Ubisoft's version of like uh, Call of Duty Bros with uh, some Rainbow Six dash on the Third side. person instead of first. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, it's the, your standard Tom Clancy's oeuvre. Yeah, it's a post, uh, semi post apocalyptic Tom Clancy. Mm. And here's <laughs> no, the thing no Russian Sean Connery. So zero out of 10. <laughs> As with most Ubisoft titles, here's something. Here's something. Okay, Valve, all I need is that one year. Because I'm going to go on a fuck-mothering holy crusade around the offices of Valve to make sure any game with a launcher is removed from Steam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or give us something in Steam that... No l- exceptions. Yeah, yeah. None. Uh, see if a game has uh, a launcher and you can pass, like, a launch flag to say, mm-hmm. no launcher. No. And it just it, skips nope, the launchers. Nope. If you want to sell your shit, you can sell it inside your fucking video game. That's fine. Put some links in there that go somewhere. But we, fuck we gotta, you we gotta and fucking experience. Yeah. So that, that we can sell you games that will decommission. We need extra shit to pop up in front of your face before you get to the game. 
I mean, oh, Steam, it, Steam is bad enough that as that is with that as a different is. control scheme so that uh, you can play the game. Mm -hmm. Oh, how about a launcher that has no controller support, period? So good luck yeah. with that. Took a while for Feral to add that to their games. <laughs> here's the thing, man. I mean, this is one of the reasons I typically avoid Ubisoft, but Ubisoft titles, here's the ones I, I'll buy when, like, the Assassin's Creed game's like a buck. I'm like, all right. I give them buck, fuck around with it, but I don't play, I don't like playing them because you gotta wait for that Ubisoft you play bullshit to, like, cycle through and chug and, like, cross your fingers and hope that shit works, and you got every time you install that motherfucker, you gotta go and disable all the notifications and the overlays and same I, thing I, for EA's I wonder, stupid built-in origin thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I wonder for Ascreed though, like if it's gonna part of that cycle is gonna be like wait until they get rid of the pay-to-win shit so that like they just give you all the in-game currency and you can actually play the game normally without having to wait. That's Assassin's Creed. You mean the yeah. Valhalla? Yeah. What about it? Yeah. It's already I'm, I've been playing it. Well, that, 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 that's what I mean. Though. The part, microtransactions, of... Jordan yeah. was talking about the microtransactions. Oh, I didn't even know there were microtransactions in it. Is it gets it? pretty grindy after a yeah. certain point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. D didn't uh, didn't Odyssey have them as well? Um, they, they, Odyssey they, did, but they pulled fucking pulled them out. Yeah, no, and, and that's what I mean. It's like they they do that eventually, but they launch with the microtransactions in usually. Well, um, I gotta get a ruling on the field on this. Uh, microtransactions. I can't remember who it was that I was watching, but they were saying that, yes, Valhalla gets really, really grindy after one point. It's like everyone complains at that point that they really want you to buy that XP boost. <laughs> yeah, so so that, that, that's what I mean. It's like you, usually after after the pay to win, like, tide dies down, there, there, there well, comes not, a point I'm in the game. I'm not going after, like, traditional stuff. I'm doing, like, actual things that are in the game currently is what I'm looking for right now. Um, not seeing it. So, if, I mean, <laughs> let's the, play the, Linux Google Cast. Uh, yeah, yeah. This, this is what I'm doing. Right I, I, I mean, at the end of the day, if 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 they never had it or if they got rid of it, that that's fine. I'm just saying that this is a thing they have been doing in their games, and you know that that that's going to be a part of um like waiting for games to get cheap is waiting for the microtransaction tap to get shut off so you can actually play the game. And it also depends if they go back and like um. You know, we were talking about that last week, though, with, like, uh, what happens when we see mobile games. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's the exact, exact same deal, for sure. That shit's, like, it, yeah. hard baked <laughs> into the DNA of the game, so. Yeah, yeah and, th and, like, this is more becoming a thing with uh, PC games now. Like, microtransactions become a core part of the DNA. And Which is stupid when you're already paying $70 nowadays for a brand new it's, AAA game. How and dare, they how dare you it. not let these people double dip? They need yeah. those more. They need an extra two million dollars because that yacht. They can't get the. They can't get the XL yacht. Yeah, they, they can't get the get double benefits. XL yacht. Yeah, they can't. They can't get all the benefits and the bonuses for their execs, and uh, they won't be able to then justify the firing of thousands of people because the I, I gotta. I gotta get two yachts, w one for each <laughs> foot. I can't just like walk around with one yacht on my foot. Well, at the same time, harboring uh, not so good people who did some pretty shitty things. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I, On that I, happy note. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, I have no love for Ubisoft whatsoever, but I'm like. It, well, it's like, no, but like, that's the that's thing, though. Like, guys like Guimo and Kotick, like, they could all fucking go to hell, right? Like, and if you don't want to spend money to support their companies, like, by, right. by all means. Don't yeah. buy the games. Yeah. Done. Yeah. That, that, that is the thing. But. Don't buy them and don't just don't just say that you're not going to buy them and then you sneakily Pedro, buy them. Pedro, Pedro, let me introduce you to the internet where we can say we're not going to do something. Uh, ah, the, the hypocrisy. <laughs> the slacktivism don't work. <laughs> then in mass, in mass, do the thing and wonder how come we have Battlefield seventy three. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Or uh, we're now uh, re-releasing uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare again. <laughs> Wait, hold, hold, hold on. Is is Battlefield seventy three something that takes place in nineteen seventy three, or no, is it man. the seventy three? Here, here, here's the whole thing. thing. There, there's a genuine like a uh, part. There's a small. Fortunately, it's a small group of people that think the internet's the fucking the real world, and um, it's not. Not even by a long shot. Not even by the foggiest stretch of the imagination. To give you like the most current example that I can think of, of the internet doesn't reflect the real world. This fucking Morbius getting re released in theaters, like. There are some dumbass film executives that are like, no, look, the internet's in love with this. They're going crazy about it again. 
we got to put it back in theaters. And I'm like, yeah, that's I, not the real world, motherfuckers. Don't I, care. Well, putting it back in the theaters. And they did. Sell tickets. <laughs> yeah. But on, on, on the flip side, look what happened with D&D. There was a massive online backlash and WotC walked it back. So it can work. Did they walk well, it got, back well, or did they just it. get the original terms that they were planning to in the first place? No, they, they, they walked it back. Uh, 5.1 SRD is now released under Creative Commons, and they are keeping the OGL uh, 1.0A as is. They're not decommissioning it. So seems seems to be we got what we want. They were testing the waters, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, like they're they're absolutely going to try it, try it now. But at least now with uh, 5.1 SRD under Creative Commons, the existing body of work out there is safe. So, and you can and you can make stuff derived off of that so that's good so it it can work but you gotta stick like pedro said you gotta stick to it the stick reason that it. worked yeah. is because everyone fucking unsubscribed from dnb beyond it created an actual financial uh incentive for these guys to act so gotta do it that's why i don't have a ubisoft account anymore that's why i don't have a act account anymore what about yeah. your epic account I uh, don't have an Epic account anymore, but that's because Team Sweeney's a dick. <laughs> oh, hey, stick, to, stick to your principles, Pedro. Someone has to. I do. <laughs> don't follow my example unless you want to, but. Fuck principles. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Especially at it. school, but. <laughs> yes, fuck the principles. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay, stay away from <laughs> Canada principles. <laughs> on that bombshell, you can always find us. Kick it off at 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time right here in your face, right here on twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. Catch us after the fact anywhere. We are. I mean, if we're there, watch us. I don't care where we're at, man. If we're on Disney, hey, watch us on Disney. But we're on Spotify, Twitch, YouTube, you name it, we're there. Um, get a hold of me, Adventstone, on Twitter, or yes, yes, yes. I remember when everyone was canceling their Twitter accounts? <laughs> mass.linuxgamecast.com just at Vin hanging over there <laughs> principles I mean I'm Jordan you can find me showing up on High School Musical the fourth <laughs> one on Disney Plus I guess yeah watch us on Disney follow me on Elon Net at Burning Fool <laughs> Mastodon at Ma Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com and I have a Twitch that I don't use twitch.tv slash Burning Fool I, I I too was on Elon Net waiting for it to burn down. I wanted to see the fire. It's still it getting really happen. crappy. It, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not just getting got any really better. really shitty. <laughs> the, uh, so, yeah, the uh, it's been fun watching the people backtrack on it. It's like, but yeah. but 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 but. <laughs> Don't you so, want that yeah, for you? Can follow me on there. That's at unaccounted for f o u r. Uh, uh, and I, I am technically on Mastodon as well. It's uh, unaccounted for with the actual number four at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Yeah. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Let's roll some credits. Maybe. So many credits. Credits? <sighs> nah, we didn't have Sandy on the show. That's not true. <laughs> not enough nipples. In three? No. I mean, I have three. Um, we gotta thank our advisors, Omegas, <laughs> our Theron, and we gotta thank our executive producers. They are uh, Bob Ram, Scott Michaud, Tom Cass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kohaku, George Pebble, Tomaj Unoid, and Hakim. And we got Chicago our Chicago apparently kicks, kicks a uh, singular butt, uh, super that's super that's yep. And uh, Sea Monsters, Renault, Rider X, Magnet, Reggie, Vertanuda, Justin, Frost, Claude, Nubbin, David, Darkwing, System T, Design Joe, and Ogie One. Hey, man, uh, I just like how uh, Follow just ate the fuck out of your own bot, son. Uh, Oil of Hope, John <laughs> <laughs> and Aromatic Dev. Got the chairlings. We got Jason B., Lord Mocha, AJ Brock, Giovanni, Joanna, Gronka DeLonka, Apollo, Greg, Holsta, North Ranger, Greg, Todd, Michelle, Chris, Reginald, O, Mr. Alert, Simcha, Steve, Alex. Mr. Amish, Dor, Colin, Egg. and Mag. d Spec 12. Lord uh -huh. Geek. Yep. And Whippy, these fuckers. <laughs> Dementor, Pebble, Zin, Kurdaki. I can make up words too, Pedro. <laughs> that's it, that's <laughs> that means that they're all made up. <laughs> We're all made up. I'm just an illusion. Ooh. You're all made up. We're just the sound of the voices in your head. Enjoy the podcast. Saint Danifier, everyone. See you next week. <laughs> Got rhythm. 
five dudes. <laughs>